As we tackle the issue of healthcare sustainability, do you see an increased role for public-private partnerships? Well, if you mean uh, private systems it, alongside the public system, not really, but let me explain that a little bit. Uh, the word private can mean a lot of different things in healthcare, right? So often we use it to mean uh, a system where people can go and get access to care faster in, in a system that's outside the public system, and that's what they have in countries like the UK. Uh, and there's a reason that we often hear people call for such a system in Canada, because the theory would be that if we have a private system, it might take some pressure off the public system, and then the public system would be better, and the private system would be good, and everybody would be happier. Uh, and that's a good theory. And uh, the problem is that when we look across other countries and see whether that theory actually plays out in practice, uh, it doesn't. I mean, the bulk of the evidence we see suggests that that actually doesn't work. What happens instead is that you put a private healthcare system alongside a public one, and suddenly you have more than one buyer, right? In the public system, prices are low. One reason they're low is because you're the only one buying. Uh, and when you have a private system alongside, suddenly prices go up. When there's more healthcare available, uh, people want more healthcare. Demand increases. That drives up costs. It's not necessarily a bad thing, but it drives up costs. And uh, when you have a private system, resources will shift. Some people who are in the public system now will move over, some of the providers, not just the people who are the patients, will move over, and resources shift away uh, disproportionately from the public system. So the evidence we have suggests that that kind of public-private partnership can drive up costs. I heard somebody once say an almost Yogi Berra type thing that uh, healthcare has been the number one concern of Canadians for so long that they've stopped caring about it. Uh, and I just wonder if you get a sense at all of the political level of political engagement, both at the federal and provincial levels, into actually tackling this sustainability problem. Well, I know that it is very much on the mind of those people in government who are responsible for long-term planning. And the reason for that is because they see that curve that I was describing to you where every year it takes up a little more of their budget. And they think to themselves, this is not a problem that we can just leave forever. It's a very hard problem to tackle because if you ask most people what's wrong with the healthcare system today, they're not going to answer that it's too expensive. They're going to say, uh, I don't get fast enough service or I don't get high enough quality. What they want is more, right? And what the government looks at, it says, we can't afford what we have. And so uh, it, it becomes, what you just mentioned, a, a real political hotspot that's very different to that's difficult to tackle uh, in any meaningful way engaging the public. Yeah, because I think uh, from the politician's perspective, they think we're increasing funding more than the rate of inflation, more than we're giving anything else. Why is this not solving the problem? Yeah, that's right. Because, I mean, one neat thing about healthcare, as I mentioned, is it's always a bit of uncharted territory. Right? We don't know that if we, uh, if, we, if we figure out how to pay for what we have today, that's not going to do it because something else will come along. That something else will be uh, hopefully good, <laughs> right? There are things that we invent in healthcare that are not good for us or not very cost effective, but there are some that are good and useful and uh, cure people from problem, big diseases, and we want to be able to do that, right? And so uh, adding more money every year sounds like, I mean, that's a pretty good deal, but it might not do it because uh, the system uh, invents new ways to keep us health healthier. Are there specific incidents or trends that we should be watching for to show that this is kind of reaching a breaking point? Um, I'm not sure that a breaking point is going to happen in the next year or two. I think uh, what we'll have to see is a general consensus emerge that, you know what, we're okay diverting some of the stuff we spend elsewhere into healthcare. And uh, that's problematic when the only areas we look at to do that in are the ones that are already publicly funded. So we're going to have to take money away from education and spend it on health. I mean, that I think I have a problem with. But if we get used to the idea that of all the money we have, we're going to spend more on health every year, and not necessarily take it away from education, but take it away from other things we do, uh, that I think we'll have to see. When people start to get more comfortable with that, it'll be a sign that we're, we're, we're easing into the reality that uh, we're going to spend a lot more of our money on health care because health is valuable to us, and, to us, and you know, that's not a bad thing, right? Uh, if you don't have your health, what do you have?